Apparently you had Maine who had just uh, went ahead and got rid of their voting system and approved ranked choice voting. So they approved it in 2016, the same uh, election when we got Donald Trump. They approved ranked choice voting. They legalized marijuana. So really it's much easier just to move to a state that's doing shit right than it is to change a backwards-ass state to build a movement up. But Maine it went ahead and voted for it, but then the Supreme Court tried to knock it down, then they put it in front of the voters again, and guess what? They still want instant runoff voting. The people of Maine have spoken. They are smart. They are intelligent. And they are intelligent. And so when it comes to the March Madness brackets, there's 64 teams, and they got to rank them. It is easier than March Madness bracket, instant runoff voting. Can you rank things? Can you put in a list 1 to 10 where you think who is the best and who is worst? Can you rank shit? If you can rank, you have the Chris Nickel Court, which is carrying on the same bullshit as the Noraki Court. So you have a change of government, but no charter convention. Who gives a fuck about constitutional law? The city council still have yet to have a constitutional basis to say why they think that they can go ahead and break the Constitution. They're a runaway criminal government. They don't listen to the Constitution. They don't listen to the one fucking document that they're supposed to listen to. That's where all the laws come from. And so you have Maine. Maine just approved instant runoff voting, but you got this old curmudgeon, this old fucking shitty dumbass Republican here, who's Paul LePage, and he's threatening not to certify the results of Tuesday's primary elections in Maine because they're using instant runoff voting. So he's being a fucking crybaby, saying it's the most horrible thing in the world to have a fair election for independents, Greens, Libertarians, for everybody. We actually get a true... Great choice voting has been enthusiastically embraced in Maine. Maine is, not only has Maine legalized marijuana, you've only got eight or nine states. I keep forgetting to see Maine, Vermont, Massachusetts, Oregon, Nevada, California, Washington, Alaska, Colorado, D.C., always plus D.C., but is it eight or nine states? So, uh, uh, were you all counting? So you have... This Paul LePage did the same thing that Dennis Flores did. So you actually had uh, the city council did not uh, put instant runoff voting on the ballot. So when it comes to the mayor, they are rigging the election. She is absolutely right. Janet Wilson is 100% right. The Pueblo City Council is rigging the election for the establishment two-party, 1% candidate. So what we need to do is we need to get out in front of this thing. We actually need to pick our City Council is a runaway criminal government, and they will not stop. They don't give a shit. They think they're above the law, and so really, we need to get an honest mayor in there and just arrest all these motherfucking bastards. They want to go ahead and change the government without a charter convention? They should have been arrested and thrown in jail and fined. You want to break the Constitution? Like, my God, how is anybody supposed to have any confidence in our government when they don't even listen to the one document that they're all supposed to listen to? More than 150 160 more jobs are coming to Pueblo. Yay! So we go ahead and spend millions of dollars on Petco, and finally, you know, there's Crazy Fresh. It works to produce produce, specialty, grab-and-go lifestyle items to the grocery stores. So guess what? Crazy Fresh is coming in, and 160 more jobs are coming in. So, you know, give credit where credit is due. We could have used that money a lot better. This is the same town that rejects homeless to go ahead and double down and remind you that it was the Russ Davis Wholesale. So it was Russ Davis Wholesale, that's Petco, Balton, uh, Andrew Trainer. So 160 more jobs, right? 107,000 people in Pueblo. So, you know, 160 lucky people will get the Charlie Trollope factory ticket of getting a job to pick, I guess, a bunch of lettuce. So congratulations, Pueblo. You get to pick a shit ton of lettuce and tomatoes, and you get to work for a local distribution called Russ Davis Wholesale, which is crazy fresh, and crazy fresh tries to bring fresh specialty grab-and-go lifestyle items to the grocery store. So we're going to be grabbing our lettuce and grabbing our melons and grabbing. That is what Davis Wholesale is going to do. They brought 160 new jobs here. So, you know, give credit where credit is due. I'm sure billions of dollars is going to be brought in. These two articles, Fox 21 is jumping up and down on this. So you had some guy named Temi Yosef threatened officers, walked further into the house, out of sight. So he had a butcher knife. 
a 31-year-old man named Philip Timiosa had a butcher knife, and they say officials. They don't even say which cops were on the scene. So essentially you have jo Josh Kopich, who is embedded in the police, and he doesn't even mention who the police are. I mean, this, you know, they did a good job. So the guy has a big butcher knife, and apparently he threatened his parents and threatened to kill them, and then uh, he was by himself in the home, and they said, yeah, there might be some weapons, but it's not like that. And they talked him out, and then they arrested him. And then that's it. And then they charged him with five counts of menacing with a deadly weapon. And then the, before the SWAT team entered the home, so it was like right before, right, he left the home and was taken into custody without incident. So, I don't know. Push come to shove, he made the right. Huge news. Apparently somebody called this to the media because you got KO, Double A, you got Fox 21, and then you got KKTV all talking about some dude had a big old butcher knife. And cops try to go to the door, and then he showed the butcher knife, and they're like, oh, shit. And then they said, we're going to send the SWAT team in. And then he was like, well, don't do that. And then he came out, and then they arrested him without incident. So I, I don't know. It, it all started with his parents. So what the hell is his parents on? Were they giving him some bullshit? I mean, you never know with these domestic situations, right? Could be the parents. Could be the child. Could be the aunt. Could be the cousin. Could be the grandmother. Mama, right? Could be anybody. Who knows? Who, the, who starts this shit? Nobody really knows. And so ultimately, don't we all just want to be one big happy family? So did the parents deserve it? I don't know. I can't say one way or the other. Was this guy in the wrong? He clearly, you know, uh, push come to shove, right? He was 31 years old, and he's got a butcher knife, so he's kind of, I don't know what he's going to take on the whole police force, just a butcher. AP, Fox 21 News, U.S. Army resumed destroying obsolete chemical weapons at a Colorado depot after a nine-month shutdown for repairs. So this is here at the Pueblo Chemical Depot. You have uh, destroying 780,000 shelves containing 2,500 U.S. tons of uh, liquid mustard agents, so mustard gas, right? So we got a lot of mustard gas just right up the road, right? Just right up the road, right here next to the interstate. So that's, you know, um, exit 50. So, God, that's a, uh, that seems like that would be a hard target because that would probably wipe out the entire city if Russia or China or North Korea was to attack us, right, and hit that chemical plant. Mustard gas would go all over the place. Uh, United States agreed to eliminate all its chemical weapons. The plant began operating in 2016. Encountered a series of problems, including a leak in a storage tank and vibrations that threatened to damage pumps. Oops! There's also radon. 50% of the state has radon. But not least, the city endorses the Pueblo ballpark proposal. So, uh, very exciting, right? Uh, there was 10 tiny homes that was going to give, uh, be given to public city council, but they're a bunch of elitist snobs. Even uh, Dennis Flores is the Republican. He is the most right-wing conservative person, and everybody's going to follow Dennis Flores' lead because he's a right-wing conservative. I don't, he, these Democrats are embarrassing. None of these are progressives. None of these believe in fair elections. You have the LePage in Maine being an old curmudgeon Republican dipshit being against instant runoff voting. All the city council members, but Ed Brown that I know of, uh, is against instant runoff voting. So out of seven people, six of them are old curmudgeon Republican pieces of shit who's against fairness, who's against democracy, who's against independence, and they are totally for a two-party Haitian runoff election. And it's the poorest country. Haiti, I love Haiti, but it's the Mark Aleph, who said the stadium is going to become a crown jewel. You had Commissioner Terry Hart said something, and then Larry Tensio said something. Schilling said something. Everybody said something. Dennis Flores said the team owner would be investing $55 million in the stadium project, and he said that the Pueblo Economic Development Corps had checked its finances. So $55 million, huh? Is that <laughs> no bullshit, huh? No bullshit at all. $55 million. All right, this should be a crown fucking jewel if you're going to put $55 million into it. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, these are the same assholes that uh, don't believe in fair democracy. They, didn't, they rejected free housing, free tiny homes. You had a contractor said, hey, you got homeless people? Here's some free homes. And they're like, nah, fuck shelter. We don't give a shit about these homeless people. Fuck these homeless people. Fuck the poor. Fuck the homeless. Fuck the worker class. That's Pueblo, <laughs> that's Pueblo, right?